2023 Audi R8 GT First Drive Review, Rage Against the Dying of the Light For Audi, one of just two automakers still mass-producing the V10, the 2023 Audi R8 GT is a watershed moment in history. The V10 has been a rare and enduring moment of emotion for the German brand that has often been criticized for being too clinical and cold in how it engineers its vehicles, and the R8 in which it has been housed has been a class-redefining supercar that not only stunned visually in every incarnation, but gave new meaning to the phrase everyday supercar. But the R8 is not long for this world, and neither is the V10 that powers it, and the R8 GT is the final farewell to two automotive icons. With this information looming menacingly, Audi sent Carbus to Seville, Spain, to get acquainted with one of the world's last road-going V10 supercars at the Circuito Monte Blanco. The 2023 R8 GT, in case you missed the details before, revives the GT suffix for the first time since the first generation in 2010. In this final iteration, the R8 becomes a rear-wheel drive-only supercar with outputs dialed up to 602 horsepower and 413 lb-ft of torque, and its transmission, suspension, and aerodynamics turned up to 11. It sheds weight, too, 55 pounds of the stuff compared to the lesser RWD R8, thanks to a diet that affects the interior, exterior, and even under the skin. Just 333 will be built, resulting in a car as exclusive as it is special. A fitting farewell, then? We took to the track to find out. Powertrain, a 10-cylinder symphony. Before we delve into the details of how it drives, we must first look at the differences between the R8 GT and its stablemates. Arguably most important is the powertrain, where Audi has turned up the wick on the 5.2-liter naturally aspirated V10. 602 horsepower in the US might seem down compared to the European claims of 620 metric horsepower, but it's no typo, just a culmination of conversions, measurement methods, and differences between the two regions. What's important is that the R8 GT is the most powerful RWD Audi ever made, and it has as much power as the regular R8 V10 Performance Quattro, just sent to two fewer driven wheels. The 7-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox remains the sole means of shifting gears, but compared to the standard RWD R8, the ratios have been shorted and are much closer to those found in the AWD variant. Despite on-paper outputs being lesser in the US, the R8 GT will sing louder stateside thanks to a standard performance exhaust that's free of the binding emissions legislation of Europe. Those 602 ponies are also more than plentiful, propelling the R8 GT from 0 to 60 mph in 3.4 seconds and on to a 199 mph VMAX. Not slow, then. Driving impressions, disrespect it at your own peril. Numbers mean little when you tear out of the pit lane with a 10-cylinder symphony screaming behind your head. From that moment on, all left-brained logic gets summarily dismissed and the limbic system takes over. First things first, this is fast. Any of the newer turbocharged monsters from Ferrari or McLaren will hit triple digits quicker, but behind the wheel, this feels about as fast as anyone with the will to continue living would be comfortable with. The sense of speed is aided by pantomime, as the V10 soundtrack elicits involuntary physical responses that build an equal intensity. A tingle starts at the base of your spine, rising with every notch on the tachometer until the hair on the back of your neck stands on end. I defy you to find me an engine that sounds better than a V10 at 8,700 RPM. Every upshift rattled off by the DCT, whether of the car's own accord or a prompt of the tactile shift paddles behind the steering wheel, is accompanied by a buck and a kick in the kidneys, perhaps a little more vicious than is absolutely necessary, but strong enough to enhance the theater of the occasion. But these days, anything is quick in a straight line. It's when you drop anchors and the fixed aluminum brake calipers clamp down on the 15-inch front and 14-inch rear carbon ceramic rotors that the speed becomes apparent. The stopper sheds speed at a rapid rate, and the brake pedal provides a fair chunk of feedback as to the grip on hand, but even the sticky Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 Summer Rubber can't defy physics if you come in too hot. A telltale pair of black stripes left by one of my industry colleagues a few days prior serves as a warning no more than a few corners in. Tip the Alcantara-clad steering wheel, which feels sublime in hand, in towards the apex of a corner, 
and there's a surprising amount of feedback for a car without the weight of an engine over the front axle. The variable ratio steering rack adjusts the level of assistance based on your speed, but the system has improved from the early days when such setups were frowned upon. In controlled circumstances, I never once felt unable to read what the front end was doing. Adhesion levels are high, with a nose that doesn't push white easily and a sense of where the limits of grip are telegraphed strongly to my fingertips. Much credit deserves to be placed on the Michelin rubber as a set of Pilot Sport for us shoes used on the drift pad later in the day yielded far more understeer than the Cup 2s the car ships with, as the Cup 2s managed even the slightly damp conditions with aplomb. In the event the nose does push wide, the R8 GT can be steered on the throttle to tighten your line. A word of caution, however, a rear-wheel drive supercar with hair-trigger throttle response is more than happy to swap ends on you. Once the mass of the V10 behind you sets the pendulum in motion, catching it in time is trickier than you might think, and if you switch the nannies off, you'll quickly find yourself pointing in the wrong direction, ask me how I know. Treat it with respect, and there are many rewards to be had. Feeding the throttle in gently on corner exit lets the Cup 2s do their best work as you catapult towards the next turn-in point, and through quick left-right corner complexes, the car is quick to change direction without becoming unsettled. A new carbon fiber reinforced plastic CFRP, anti-roll bar equipped to the R8 GT is just one of the many small upgrades that help keep things balanced under duress, but the car we drove was also equipped with adjustable coilovers at the rear of the car, something the US cars will ditch in favor of a fixed setup. Having only experienced the car on a well-maintained circuit or attacking a few smooth curbs was all the tricky surfacing we had to contend with, I can't say much for the R8's ride quality. Then again, if you're buying a limited-run final edition car like this for its on-road ride comfort, you probably shouldn't even be looking at it. The R8 GT is a weapon of precision, but that doesn't mean it's not fun, and should the situation present itself, and you feel brave or cocky enough, Audi Sport engineers have equipped the GT with a new toy you might like to play around with called Torque Rear Mode. For the layman, that's Drift Mode. Drift Mode in a RWD car? But wait, isn't drift mode in a RWD car simply what you do with your right foot? Not quite. Torque Rear, while it shares its name with the so-called drift mode of the Audi RS3, is something entirely different here. Instead of shunting all the power to the outside rear wheel as it does in the RS3, in the R8 GT, it's a 7-stage stability control system akin to the one in the Mercedes-AMG GTR, catering to various angles of slip depending on the level you choose. Levels 1 through 3 feature brake intervention on the front axle to help initiate a slide, making minor drifts pretty accessible for even a relative amateur, relative being the keyword here as it's not something just anybody can do. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.